Putin needs to end the war against Ukraine before a victory parade on May 9th. This was announced in early April by Secretary of the National Security and Defense Council of Ukraine Alexei Danilov. At the same time, US intelligence said that Kremlin's principle needs at least some victory to this date. Americans say that after an unsuccessful attempt to capture Kyiv, Putin's troops will focus their efforts on taking control of Donbass. And this, as they believe, may be the victory that bloodthirsty president wants until May 9th. This day is sacred for Russians, and last but not least, it is Putin's merit. For many years, Russia has been celebrating the Victory Day, the day when Nazi Germany surrendered. Moreover, for years, the Russians have been accustomed to the fact that they all won the Second World War. And so they win every year, rattling guns at parades. At one time, the Soviet Union deliberately postponed the date of victory over fascist invaders. In fact, the act of surrender was signed on May 7, 1945, in the French city of Reims in the presence of military leaders from all allies. The document came into the force the next day. And while the whole world celebrated the Day of Remembrance and Reconciliation on May 8, the USSR celebrated victory. The tradition of military parades began only in 1965, when the population began to forget the horrors of war, and then Russia have been celebrating every year. For Russians, this is not just a celebration, it's also threats to the world, glory to Putin and a bunch of weapons that are now used to invade neighboring countries. Infantry fighting vehicles, tanks, multiple launch rocket systems, Iskanders and, of course, the Yars nuclear rocket launcher complex. This is so that NATO sat silently. But for Putin, this day has a special meaning. He considers it a holiday of unification of the country. However, he tries to sew this leaky sheet by the Soviet patterns. In 2005, Georgi Mitrofanov, a professor of the St. Petersburg Theological Academy, called everything Russians do before May 9th a victory frenzy. About that time, Putin began to cultivate this day as a sacred symbol for every Russian. Putin's minions are doing everything to be in trend. They dress up children in the uniform of the Second World War and decorate strollers as tanks. The new symbol of the Russian victory is the so-called St. George's Ribbon. Brand new fictional symbol. And if now every Russian wants to put this ribbon on, in the Soviet era nobody would dare to do this. Let's look at the 1985 parade footage. There are machines of the Second World War, there is a uniform of the Second World War, and nobody has St. George's ribbon. The same was true in 1995, when the USSR no longer existed. Vehicles, uniform, but no ribbons. So as in 2005, the same image. Now, for comparison, look at the footage of 2020. Vehicles, people and children abundantly covered with black and orange. Putin too, of course. Victory Day is a celebration. Celebrating, Russians drink vodka and threaten the West. Certainly every Russian will tell you that his grandfather fought in the Second World War, or great-grandfather, or father. Russians take portraits to the march called the Immortal Regiment. Putin also likes to join, however most of the participants carry portraits of people they never knew. Some of these portraits show people who has never fought in the Second World War, but after all, can an ordinary Russian distinguish a Soviet soldier from a Wehrmacht if even on billboards congratulating Russians on Victory Day officials put pictures of Nazis from the Luftwaffe or an American fighter? 
So now, in 2022, Putin has decided to fight Nazism. And since he didn't find it anywhere, he decided to reinvent it. Thus, Russian propaganda started overspreading stories about Nazis that seized power in Ukraine. And if TV says so, it really is. In fact, using symbols of the past, Putin has ignited a conflict that Europe has not seen since World War II. Today's war hasn't become global yet. The West doesn't want to fight on the Ukrainian soil. Ukrainians tired of asking, but they are asking for weapons. They need tanks, planes and air defense systems to stop Putin and prevent Europe from lying in ruins again, as it did in the 1940s. But Europe already forgot what stress is. By postponing decisive steps, the West allows Russian propaganda to penetrate deeper and deeper into its own way of life. And the Russians are preparing for victory around the world. Provocative marches with portraits, flags, vodka and St. George's ribbons are planned in Germany, France, Portugal, Hungary and Greece. Even living in a comfortable developed countries, they cultivate hatred for a civilization they are unable to build on their own.